Okay, <laughs> it turned out that I had a short window of time, so here we are at the flip chart. <laughs> Before we go through a brief recap of RAID, um, there's a few corrections from last time. <laughs> As I say, I'm not super tech, I don't know it all, so it's always worth checking out the comments for people who have added extra information or have corrected me on a few things that I got wrong. Um, Daniel Vaughan said that it was actually XP that was the first desktop version of Windows to go to the NT engine, not Windows 7, and uh, he was right on that. Um, Aft said that it was actually RLL drives, not RFL. It was many years ago that I was dealing with that stuff, <laughs> but yes, it was RLL drives. And if you look up RLL drives, you'll probably find people doing projects, uh, bringing back uh, IBM PC compatibles of the time. And indeed, uh, one of the videos that I was watching was going through, I think it was a late 90s um, retro board, which was, create, which was a new board kit that you can buy. Don't know if it's still available now, but it came with not only the board, but uh, the sockets and all the chips. Um, and even, I think, some of the BIOS and a few other chips that were necessary as well. Uh, what happens in terms of power supply or what, I don't know. But yeah, it was amazing to sit down and waste a bit of time watching some of those. And also, one of the things that uh, Philip Saunders wanted uh, me to remind people of was the time it can take to rebuild um, a RAID set. <laughs> and uh, yeah... Uh, he was saying that an 8, eight terabyte uh, RAID rebuild uh, was taking him quite a few days. So, yeah. RAID. <laughs> there are uh, three main types that you'll come across with the usual home users. There are more, and indeed we're actually going to be using a combination. But Redundant array of inexpensive disks. RAID 0 is where you have, let's say we've got two 2 terabyte disks. They will concatenate into one large disk and 4 terabytes is what will be presented to the operating system. Of course, there's no resilience or redundancy here. If you lose a drive on that set, the entire set is gone. Goodbye, Vienna. You have RAID 1. RAID 1 is also known as mirroring. So if you have two, ter two, two terabyte hard drives, why did I use two? Because I'm again going two, two, and I'm mecking up my maths. <laughs> but what happens to one drive happens to the other. The downside of this is the operating system only sees two terabytes of storage. So you're buying um, your terabyte per um, dollar is halved you're buying two hard drives for the redundancy. If you lose one, the other one will keep going. But obviously, um, in terms of uh, what you can use, um, you're only using half of what you're paying for in terms of usable space. Now, <laughs> along comes RAID 5, or in ZFS parlance, RAID Z. Most, um, well, if you have three two terabyte drives. One drive is used as parity, but the operating system sees four terabytes of storage. So in terms of your dollars uh, to terabytes that you've actually got access to, it's better than the uh, mirroring, than the straightforward mirroring. But there's a few um, upsides and downsides to this. Now most um, home setups typically get three large hard drives for a reasonable balance. It's um, uh, three drives, you're not chewing as much power as you will with a, a larger array of drives. You're not generating so much heat and it's not too bad in terms of access time. Well, typically write access is the worst because uh, the fewer drives have got to be accessed at the same time. That's not that straightforward of a calculation. Um, it all depends on how your controllers are set up and all the rest of that jazz. But in terms of cost of drive, in, in terms of the balance, 
uh, the average home user will typically go for three larger capacity drives uh, in a three drive uh, RAID 5, RAID Z configuration. And the fact you've only got one parity is also known as Z1, uh, RAID Z1 in, um, in ZFS parlance. Um, so this configuration is typically the one you'll most commonly find in smaller home configurations because it offers the best bang for the buck and balance. Um, obviously um, there are people with more drives and we'll come on to that in a sec. For ours, um, RAID 5 is not going to work because we're dealing with disparate drives, drives of different sizes. For this to really um, sing, the drives all have to be of equal size. Um, in the disparate world, <laughs> if we tried it, the, the RAID 5 set would be reduced to the size of the smallest drive. So if you had a 3 terabyte, a 1 terabyte, and a 2 terabyte, the, the RAID 5 set would uh, cut itself off at the 1 terabyte. So effectively you'd be using 1, 1, and 1. Uh, so you'd have 2 terabytes presented to the operating system and the rest would be wasted. So for this exercise, uh, RAID 5 is, uh, is out of it. If you've asked me questions on VDEVs <laughs> over the last few years, I have been a bit cagey and a bit uncertain myself. Now, what is a VDEV and why does this matter with, um, with a lot of this stuff? Ignore that for the minute. If you actually do um, a ZFS status or a Z pool status, you have the pool, you have the VDEV and you have the disks. Typically, the, the VDEV can look to be invisible. If you just ignore that, because typically most people only have uh, the one set and uh, that would be a VDEV made of the three disks. Now it's possible to actually traditionally, if you wanted to expand uh, a set like this, you would have to make another VDEV with more drives. So effectively you've got two um, RAID Z, RAID 5 sets connected in to one pool. And that's how it would do it typically. But why I've been a bit cagey on some of this stuff is because a few things have been happening. And uh, let's have a look. <sighs> it's been on the cards for many years. There was better news about it at the start of this year. And I believe you'll have to um, check up on this if you're interested in it. I believe that code was committed a few months ago in August. Um, and what that allows you to do is add another drive into a RAID Z VDEV. <laughs> but there's a few catches with this. And double check everything that I'm saying. <laughs> because this is still relatively new to me. And yeah. One of the main problems that people have is buying um, all the drives needed uh, for a RAID 5 or a RAID Z um, in one go. Um, it, it would be better if the system allowed you to set up um, to set up a, a RAID Z 3 drive system and then later on add another drive when you could afford it and then later on add another drive and or add another parity drive. You know, add these things on into the VDEVs as you can afford them, rather than trying to chunk up all the money up front. And it looks like the code has been added to allow you to do this. Um, as I'm standing here say, talking about this, I'm wondering whether the code exists yet or not to allow you to add another parity drive into the set. I'm not sure. But if you do follow this avenue, um, I, I, I don't think it's in any of the um, distributions yet. 
even if it is, it would be um, something. I will chunk an article into the hoo-ha bar of this video. In fact, I'll chunk a couple of articles, one of which will probably go through VDEVs better than I can, and roughly what we're going to be doing is that when you add a drive, um, as I've said in, in, with these red ones, into an existing set, there's already existing data. There's existing data here and existing parity data. And I believe, if what I'm reading is correct, that it will not automatically um, redistribute redist that data. I don't believe it does. Check on that. So what you'd have to do is, after doing this, you'd have to issue a command to get it to redistribute that data um, amongst all available disks. Otherwise, you're going to have space issues. Um, and it's not totally clear how the new data would go on. So this has been done. It's been on the cards for a long time, um, adding something new to the VDEVs. Uh, I've, I've never been totally sure of where it's been because it's always been one of those long boil things, but apparently um, it's been done. It has now been done. So um, we go back to R0 and 1 and 5. We've uh, wiped 5 out of the equation for our disparate drives because uh, RAID 5 works best when all the drives are the same size and that's not what we're doing. We're chunking things in a bit here. So one of the things that we're doing is we're going to be creating multiple VDEVs and we're doing that um, by uh, by creating another, a number of mirror sets. Uh, yeah, so this is roughly what we're going to look like. I think I'm going to call the, the set Lion. Um, I have a domain at home called Big Cats, <laughs> you know, Jaguar, Panther, Lion, that sort of thing. And the other Lion died a death. Um, well, I can't be asked to reconfigure it, to be honest. <laughs> but that's what we're going to create. And we're going to create um, probably two VDEVs, but this is just for demonstration. And the VDEVs will each contain uh, a mirror set. Now that has um, a number of smaller advantages in that rebuild of a small mirror set um, would take considerably less time than doing the whole thing if all the drives were configured to be um, a RAID 5 set. Um, so that could uh, take a bit more time. Also, you can um, suffer more failures so long as those failures are not on the same VDEV. So I could potentially lose drive B, but that VDEV would still function. I could lose drive C, but that VDEV would still function off drive D. And it's got a bit more... Um, flexibility isn't quite the word. It's got a bit more resilience so long as you don't lose two drives in the same set. <laughs> So that should, uh, and, and it should be, because it's smaller, take less time to rebuild. Also, um, it's a bit more um, flexible on the controllers. But you've got to watch what you're doing. Now, some things on some systems will are beyond your control uh, in terms of how the processor talks to the bus and various devices on the bus and how many controllers you put in and how, what's on already on there. But typically in a mirror, um, when you're writing data out, it is typically only writing to the two drives that the data is going to, or those drives, you know. As opposed to in a RAID set, it's got to write, write to the whole set. So what you can do is I can put, or I'm going to be putting A, C and E on one hard drive controller, and B, D and F on another hard drive controller so that when the when the processor is writing the data out um, it's going each one has its own controller to talk to the drive to do it as, as good as it can um, also talking about speed i have had um, some feedback because um, zfs does buffer to a point so the zfs will control um, the buffering to the slowest uh, the slowest drive in that team in, in, in whatever it's writing to. So the feedback that I've had so far and I will just check that while we are here just in case there's been any more responses 
but um, let's see uh, there has been nothing left uh, one person did say <clears throat> I've done lots of small pools of random drives including ones with drives in USB 2 cases over the years and I've never had ZFS complain so uh, in theory uh, that is going to be uh, oh uh -huh. <laughs> aft has replied a bit further uh, MFM modulated frequency modulation encoding RLL run length limited encoding aha hmm um, my problem is I haven't dealt with those acronyms for so long so basically that's what's being said um, the feedback that I've had so far is that uh, the drives shouldn't matter um, so hopefully touch wood we should be on a winner to this um, as, as long as we keep everything on SATA so that's roughly what we're going to be doing um, we're going to be having a couple of different VDEVs um, with drives in mirror configurations and those VDEVs are going to come together as storage for the pool lion uh, what have I got here uh, yeah this is roughly what a walkthrough of what I'm going to be doing uh, yeah that's the other one this is the last one what we're going to do is we're going to start off with two three terabyte hard drives and a four terabyte hard drive so what I'm going to do is demonstrate uh, a three terabyte partition and a one terabyte partition on drive four. These two partition, these two, I'm going to link a drive and a partition in the first VDEV. Then I'm going to link this one terabyte partition and the three terabyte drive in the second uh, VDEV. Now that will demonstrate um, the creation of partitioning and having partitions and drives operating in the same VDEV um, and then joining them together as the start of the pool. Once we've got that functioning then I'm going to attach another three terabyte hard drive and I'm going to run a replace. So I'm going to replace that partition with that drive. What I'm then going to do is enable the auto expand because at, at this point you've effectively got four terabytes showing in the pool. But with an auto expand running, uh, once this one terabyte partition has been replaced with this three terabyte drive, after it'll probably take a Z pool export and Z pool import, which I'd obviously I'd advise after any kind of operation like this, um, when you're adding stuff in, just to make sure that the, the system actually properly uh, reinitializes the pool and gets the storage right. Um, an auto expand should then see the fact that this VDEV now has a total of three terabytes to present and I'm expecting the pool to then show six terabytes so effectively we'll have the mirrors <laughs> one thing which is obvious but I'm going to say anyway <laughs> just for the hell of it is that do not use partitions from the same drive across pools because if you, you if you have two partitions if you have the if the, if you envisage this uh, four terabyte that way, and I had two terabyte part two two terabyte partitions on it, and I used one for this side of the mirror and another one for that side of the mirror, if I lost the drive, I would be losing both sets at the same time. So that is the one thing. Don't do that. <laughs> but yeah, that's roughly what we're going to be doing. Now it is, um, given my schedule for the next couple of weeks, it's probably going to be a couple of weeks before I can get the hardware set and the necessary recording equipment set in order to actually physically do this. But uh, that's what I'm uh, that's what I'm hoping to demonstrate. I'm hoping to demonstrate that you can use partitions in the same drive um, across uh, to, to with in conjunction with physical drives to use a VDEV so you can split things up and that you can actually replace partitions you can replace things and actually increase the VDEV size as you're going now typically with any RAID of any configuration um, it, it's easier to add drives it's not so easy to take them away <laughs> you've typically got to copy the data off blow, blow away um, the RAID set and recreate it and copy it back on again um, 
The question would be, and I don't think I can do this, was would, would be if I wanted to then use all of this four, four terabyte in this VDEV. I would probably have to, um, I'd still be limited by this three terabyte. I would probably have to destroy this part, remove this from the VDEV and then reinsert it as the entire drive and then it would have to rebuild again. There are obviously um, risks with rebuilding um, <laughs> in which when drives, when you're rebuilding, they are, um, it's quite a load on the drives. You are putting quite an intense load on the drives and that is potentially an encouragement for them to fail. So yeah. Mirror sets, by the way, don't have to configure, consist of just two drives. You can have a mirror set of three drives if you wanted. I, I think you may be able to do more. Who knows? But if you were that way inclined, you could actually have a VDEV that consists of a mirror of three drives. And what would be mirrored would be mirrored across those three drives. So that is another possibility. And, and that ultimately is what all this comes down to. It comes down to uh, what you've got, um, what your data storage needs are, what your attitude to risk is, <laughs> and the physical configuration of whatever equipment you've got to hand. So that is a thing. <laughs> so I'm, hopefully I should be able to demonstrate this um, happening and, and show you the, the kind of flexibility that exists at the present time. People are still adding to um, ZFS's functionality and abilities and it, it's just, yeah. It's the version, the, the version of ZFS is called Open ZFS and that was one of the forks of ZFS when the Oracle thing happened. So yeah, uh, Open ZFS is the one you're probably looking at. Uh, which will um, eventually go down to Linux uh, distributions. So I think that about covers it. The, 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 f for some people, the ability to expand an existing uh, RAID Z set um, is going to be something that they'll salivate over. <laughs> but again, um, it doesn't come cheap. There's always a trade-off. And any rebuild operation takes time and it puts stress on your hard disks. So I think that's about it. As usual, check in the hoo-ha bar uh, for the link to a couple of things and also check the comments for anyone who's got anything extra to add to this. Um, it's going to be a couple of weeks before I'm able to get the physical kit up and running and, the, and recordings and actually do this uh, for real, but it will be done in Linux rather than um, open Indiana stroke Solaris. So until then, take care of yourselves. Ciao for now.